Well, hello there, ladies and gentlemen. It is uh, seven minutes to the hour, and we just thought, you know what? As you've arrived early, let's get on a little bit early and say hello, rather than keeping you waiting. Um, how are you all? Sorry about a little bit earlier. I, I went, came on, and I had nothing in my um, control panel, and I thought there's nobody there. So when I heard Tina saying, "Oh, it's all right, everybody. We'll be along soon," I said to her, "Who are you talking to? There's nobody there." <laughs> So anyway, <laughs> um, how are you guys doing? So uh, we've got, uh, oh, hello, Julia, <laughs> and uh, Kathy's doing fine, Emma's put the kids to bed, Kitty is from Carlsbad, California, hey Kitty, nice to see you, um, so I hope you guys are all excited because you are in for a treat. Um, what time is it where you guys are? It is six minutes to four in the morning where I am. Um, Ali's on the line. Hello, Ali. Lovely to see you. Um, Angela is looking forward to the webinar. It's five o'clock in the afternoon. It's 10 p.m. where Emma is. Uh, it's one o'clock in the afternoon in California. California. Um, it's four o'clock in Texas. It's 4 a.m. You're a rock star. Kitty, I'm not sure rock stars have to get up at 4 o'clock in the morning. I appreciate your sentiment. <laughs> so how are you, Ms. Sibley? Very well, thank you, Joe. And the first thing I have to say is a big shout out to Joe for getting up at four o'clock in the morning to help me with this webinar. I am so I mean, I'm not a morning person myself. It's ten o'clock here in the UK, and this is my time of night. So I don't even know that four o'clock in the morning exists. <laughs> now, can any everybody else hear Tina? Okay, because you're sounding very echoey to me, Tina. Yeah, you sound echoey to me as well. I'm just hoping that that's because we're kind of the organizers thing and um, everybody else isn't getting that. Okay, everybody else can hear you fine. Yeah, lovely. Everybody else is saying they can hear you fine. Fab. But, uh, you sound like you're in a tunnel to me. Yeah you, you, yeah, you do as well to me. I think it's probably the feedback because we're both all, all organizers on the panel. Must be. Uh, oh well. Yeah. Not to worry. Good, as long as everybody else can hear you, that's the absolutely main main thing here. Um, so I would like to know in the questions box from all the people that are online so far, what is the one thing that you would love to learn about hosting webinars? That's what I'd like to know. What's the one thing that you would love to learn? Or another good question as well, answer me two questions. What is the one thing that has been holding you back? from conducting and hosting your own webinars that's a good one what's been holding you back from conducting and hosting your own webinars let's have a look here uh, okay Jenny wants to learn how to get started when I'm scared and I don't know how to get going that's a good one um, hurry says getting nervous Jude says how to organize one, so how to actually organize and put a webinar together, that's a good one. Um, Angela is unsure about how to do a webinar for a service-based business. Oh, okay, that's a good one, Angela. Um, Rebecca says something of go-to webinar looking at Google Hangouts as an alternative. Um, Emma says time and planning. Chris says how to do it, lack of know-how. Uh, yes, Jenny, you answered my second question. <laughs> that was a brilliant one. Uh, Kitty says, holding her back is the learning curve. I love that name, by the way, Kitty. Um, holding her back is the learning curve and the amount of time that I imagine it would take to learn it and not knowing how much it will cost before I get started. Awesome. Do you know what, Kitty? Actually, webinars are super easy um, to do. It's just a kind of, I think the only thing that makes them a little bit daunting and hard are just the techie issues. But once you've got that down, you're good to go. Uh, Kathy says, I do them already, but finding an affordable and stable platform that has all the features I want has been challenging. Uh, yeah, okay. I've, n I've always found GoToWebinar to be pretty reliable, I have to say, but uh, they're probably not the cheapest on the market, that's sure. 
Um, the lovely Davina is with us this evening, and she says a good connection when demonstrating, i.e., sound and visuals. Um, Kitty's put thanks. My mum liked it too. <laughs> Fantastic. All right. Okay. Well, we are two minutes before the hour. So uh, you've got two minutes, ladies and gentlemen, to quickly grab yourself a cup of tea um, or uh, a glass of wine or, you know, a, some popcorn. <laughs> popcorn and a Diet Coke. <laughs> And uh, get yourself comfortable and ready for what is going to be a stupendous session uh, this afternoon, evening, or first thing in the morning if you are somewhere in Asia. Uh, so, two minutes, go and run, and uh, oh, it's nine o'clock in New Zealand. Good morning, Diane, in New Zealand. Good morning, indeed. Chris says, wine will do nicely, thank you. Oh, not for me, Chris, it's four o'clock in the morning now. I've got, I'm on the tea. I like the sound of a strawberry margarita <laughs> from Kathy. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Bill. Yes, we're doing really super well, thank you. Rhett's in bed at the moment, as he should be. Um, but we're ever so well. I hope all's well with you as well. Thank you very much for asking. Um, good. I think we should get the show on the road, Tina, don't you? Absolutely. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I uh, hope you can uh, see Tina's screen nice and clearly there. And uh, just from myself and Tina, I'd like to say welcome to Wicked Webinars. Um, and as a lot of you will know who's on the call tonight, um, and I, I won't you know, go into details because I want to let Tina crack on with her presentation as soon as possible. Um, but as many of you know, I've been doing webinars now for, gosh, where are we now? 2013, May, so nearly three, uh, nearly three years. Um, and really, a lot of where my business is today um, is down to webinars. Webinars have been intrinsic in uh, me building a list of subscribers, intrinsic in me building my business, uh, intrinsic sales tools for selling my business, um, growing my profile, building my reputation, all of that kind of stuff. So webinars really are an amazing and fantastic tool um, for you and your business. Um, but I also know that webinars can be uh, super scary, super daunting, uh, you know, the whole kind of techie aspects of webinars plus talking into a blank screen when actually you've got an audience of people listening to you is actually really nerve-wracking you know if le at least if you've got an audience in front of you you've got people to speak to and you can kind of you know um, create rapport by actually looking at them in the eye and all that kind of stuff when you're talking to a blank screen it actually can get super nerve-wracking <laughs> from actually going out there and doing webinars but I do keep really encouraging and urging people to move out of their comfort zone and just try it because it really is one of the most powerful tools online for both uh, or, or for growing your profile, building your list and selling your products and services. Um, and once you get past that first webinar, i.e. my one where I actually couldn't turn the Bimin webinar off at the end and, and that was all very hilarious at the time um, and uh, you know, believe me I became known as the queen of webinars going wrong, once you get through those, those early comfort zones then, uh, then gosh you're, you're absolutely laughing. So I am not going to waffle on anymore, I'm going to hand straight over to the very lovely Tina Sibley who is your host and presenter tonight. Um, I'm going to mute myself, both myself and Neil um, are in the questions box. So if you have any questions through the actual webinar itself and you need any help, then just ask questions. But if you want questions specifically answered by Tina, then do just try and hold on to those questions till the end uh, so that when Tina gets to the Q&A, all your questions will be there ready for her to answer. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, please put your virtual hands together for the fantastic and wonderful public speaking coach, Ms. Tina Sibley. <laughs> thank you, Joe. Wow, what a welcome. Thank you, thank you so much. Hi, everybody. I am thrilled to be here to share a heap load of stuff with you this evening. I hope you all got the email that I sent you with the handout and that you've got that printed out and in front of you because that's going to help you to really cement some of the tips that I'm going to be throwing at you tonight. I'm going to be packing a lot in so it helps to just get the salient points on paper in front of you and then scribble a whole load of, of other notes as well. Now the other thing is for me, as Joe just said, when you're talking to an audience you get 
feedback from them, you can see their faces, they're nodding, you, you know, you've, you've got the body language. Now, we don't have that on a webinar, so I want to ask you a favor. On your little control panel, there is a little hands up signal. And what I'd like you to do is all stick your hands up for me to say that you uh, have identified where it is uh, and basically just practice sticking your hands up. Brilliant. Thank you, Ali. That's it. Thank you, Andy, Angela, oh, lovely loads of, thanks, Davina, lots of hands going up. This is really important because I, occasionally I'm going to be asking, you know, do you relate to this? Do you kind of get this? Do you understand it? Because if, if you don't, then obviously what I'm going to do is work harder to put that point in a different context so that you do get it. All right, fantastic. So, first of all then, I want you to raise your hand again if you want to make a difference in the lives of other people, so the kind of customers that you've got. If you really want to serve them and make a difference to them, stick your hands up for me now. Fantastic. Lots of hands going up. That's good. We're in the right place then. Um, <laughs> and now I'm going to stick you all back down. Now put your hands up again for me. If in doing so, if in serving your customers, you want to make a big difference to your own life, bring in more income, live more of the lifestyle that you want. Yeah, I've got lots of hands going up again. <laughs> that's, that's good. That's good. We're definitely in the right place. Now, I'm guessing that you're on this webinar this evening because you're uh, you've got your own business and what you want is more clients, but perhaps you're not getting as many clients as you would like right now. Perhaps you're not making as many sales right now. And then what that means is you've got lots of frustration going on because you're doing a lot of work, you're getting things ready, but it, you're not getting the recognition that you deserve. Or perhaps, you know, you've got some fantastic stuff. You've got an amazing product. You've got amazing knowledge. But you don't know how to stand out from everybody else who's out there online also offering perhaps something similar. Or maybe you've got something totally unique, but you still, you know, can't get the message out there to people. So if that's you and you relate to any of that, stick your hands up again for me. Brilliant. Thank you, Veronica, and oh, there's some names here I can't pronounce. Um, <laughs> thanks, Rebecca. Thanks, Nancy. Yeah, lots of lots of hands going up here. Cool. And what you'd like instead is to find it really easy to attract clients to you. So instead of having to go out chasing for the work, you really want the clients coming to you, and you want to stand out as the credible expert in your chosen field, right? So. Let me tell you about webinars in particular, but webinars actually form a wider um, part of things. So what you've got is a whole load of web webinars fit in to the wider thing of, of public speaking. So webinars are a way of getting your message out to the rest of the world. But what's brilliant is a lot of the stuff that you can learn when you get really good at webinars, you can also learn in other situations where you can attract clients. So on stage, perhaps perhaps you work for an organization and you, you just, just you know want to get your message across in meetings. Maybe you know there's a, a way that you've got to train your staff and all that kind of stuff. Or videos, you know, videos is another way of getting your message out to people. Now, at the heart of these, it doesn't matter where you're speaking, whether you're speaking in webinars or any of these other areas, there are four core things that you have to do in order to be able to run those webinars efficiently and to really position yourself as that credible expert in your field. The first thing is you need to have confidence. Now, uh, on the GoToWebinar registration where you, I asked you to put the kind of biggest challenge, so many people said confidence was a big issue, um, both confidence in terms of the speaking and putting the presentation together and confidence in the techie aspect. So confidence is a massive part of it. The next thing that you have to have is great content, yeah? You don't want to run a webinar that's really boring. You've got to have the content that's going to really light the fire of the people that you want to be talking to, of your potential customers. It's also about the delivery. You know, when we talk about good speakers, we talk about them having charisma. Now, I'm sure 
you've listened to many webinars <laughs> where the presenter is just kind of a monotone robot. They sound a bit like, you know, R2-D2 um, on a bad day. And obviously what you want to do is come across really well. And that's one of the things that we're, you know, it's just essential really to run in great webinars. And finally, it's like you don't sort of just start somewhere and stay there. You want to improve all the time. As Jo said, she's come on an awful long way since she first started doing webinars. So certainly when I first started speaking, I was all over the place and through learning, I got good at speaking. And then of course, it was the online speaking, so webinars and videos, and it was a new learning curve all again. So it's all about continuous improvement and that doesn't mean you have to go from zero to ten in one fell swoop it's just about taking it in easy incremental steps so wherever your starting point is now it's just right okay what's the next little bit that I need to improve what's the next little bit that I need to work on so those are the four cornerstones of speaking and they it, that, that will be the same that will be true for if you're talking in webinars or any of the other methods now, at the heart of all of that is one of the points, and that is selling. Now, it doesn't matter if you're selling a product or a service. There was a question um, just now about what about if we're selling a service. Well, selling public speaking skills is selling a service. And what, what webinars can do is you can actually teach a service. So, you know, it doesn't matter what that service is. I mean, obviously, there are some services which are going to be more... Um, uh, viable to be run through webinars than others. But if you're selling a product or a service, it could be that you're just selling yourself. You're, it might be that you're trying to land a big contract or you're going for a job interview or something like that. So you're selling yourself. Or of course, you could be just selling an idea. You know, you might be a fundraiser and you're just selling your favorite cause and you want to get people, you know, agreeing with you that it's a fantastic cause and to put their hands in their pockets. So it doesn't matter which of the speaking situations you're in and which of these four cornerstones you're, you're actually implementing at the time, the whole heart of this should be selling. And this is the bit that most people, including certainly did, and it's something, again, which fits into the continuous improvement because you can always get better, better at it. I'm really lucky. I have got some of the best mentors in the world, um, and the lovely Joe Barnes is, is at the top of the tree of all of them. Having the great mentors to help you with that is just, um, you know, it, it's certainly been the best thing that I ever did. Okay, so... Let's have a look then a little bit about me. Let me tell you my story. Well, I started off uh, selling training and particularly public speaking training and doing it the hard way, going out networking. It was one of those things where I, it was just a big struggle. I'd go to a networking event, I'd do my pitch, people would say, wow, what a brilliant pitch that was, but they just wouldn't buy off me. You know, I, I didn't know why. Um, <clears throat> And, of course, one of the big problems is when you're just doing networking locally, you're working a very local market. So <clears throat> you're not reaching the vast numbers of people that you could be reaching by running webinars. I discovered the whole online thing, and I started doing my online journey about two and a half years ago now, I guess. And I found it really difficult at first. And I remember I first probably did my first webinar about two years ago. Uh, it bombed really badly, and I was reluctant to do it again. No, 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 I'll, sti I'll stick to what I know best. I'll stick to the live stage. Uh, but obviously, I was missing a trick there, and I'm going to tell you why in a little while. Cut a long story short, because I don't want to wrap it on about myself too much, but basically what I did was I thought, it's just too much like hard work doing all this on my own. So I decided to invest in the right programs with the right mentors and now it's just a completely different story. I have got so much more confidence, I can do the selling much more and I'm getting my message out to more people than I, you know, that I, well it, it just didn't come close when I first started doing it on my own. This particular webinar tonight actually was oversubscribed by almost six times at which just blew me out of the water. And as you know, Joe was welcoming people there. You can see that people are here from all around the world. We've got people from you know, Australia, New Zealand. We've got people from the West Andes 
um, side of the states. We've got people in Europe. We've got obviously lots of people in the UK because that's where I'm from. We've got people in India, which is it's just phenomenal. So, how many of you stick your hands up again for me if you would like to get your message right around the globe? Stick your hands up now for me if you want to get your message right around the world. Fantastic. Oh, up they all go. So you can become an international superstar rather than just a local, another coach, you know, another business coach, another business owner, or whatever. Okay, so a little bit about me as well, just where I'm from. I'm from I'm living in Plymouth right now, as you see, that is the hoe on a nice sunny day, which is actually quite rare. My passion is salsa dancing, particularly on the beach. And my aim, because we, we all have a dream and a vision, my vision and my aim for later on this year is to move to Gibraltar, which gives me all the sea I want and sun as well. Okie dokie. So let me tell you some reasons then why you should be running webinars. Um, I th well, first of all, whoops, let's just tell you what we're going to cover. I'm going to tell you 12 reasons why you should be running webinars. Now, another one of these big questions that's come up on the uh, registration page was, how do I fill the webinars? Okay, I'm going to give you 15 traffic tactics to fill your webinars. As I said, this one is oversubscribed, and I didn't even use anywhere near the 15 of them. I only used about three. So can you imagine what it would be like if, if I'd had time to use all 15 of them? And another question that came up was platform reviews. You know, oh God, what platform do I use? Some of them, you know, are so expensive. Some of them are cheap, but they're not that reliable, and so on. So I'm going to give you my experience of a few that I've used. There are some mistakes that will make you look like a right old amateur. Although having said that, in the beginning, it's not as much of a tall order as it is if you're speaking on stage. But there are things that you can avoid if you know what to look for. I'm going to give you the number one key insight to wicked webinars that don't just, you know, get everybody giving you lots of applause, but the important thing is that they sell. I'm going to give you five ways to keep your audience with you. Again, um, you've got the situation where if you've got a live audience, people generally sit there and, and they're looking at you on a webinar, of course. People are probably, you know, surfing the Facebook, you know, having a look at Twitter and maybe doing a load of all the other things. Now, I hope you're not doing that because obviously it's far more important for you to learn how to do webinars than it is to check your emails or your Facebook status updates right now. Um, okay. I'm going to give you six killer strategies to use and monetize webinars. So six different types of webinars and how you can use those to actually monetize them. Then I'm going to just give you a very short um, information on how I can help you with your webinars and speaking. And I promise that's going to be short, but trust me, you are going to want to hear what I've got to say because it is really an exciting opportunity for you. Do stay to the end because not only am I going to answer your questions personally, but I am going to show you where you can get your hands on a free template guide. One of the things that um, has come up again, time and time again in the questions page is, well, I don't know where to start. You know, I can't put it together. Well, I'm going to give you a template to make it easy. So you just fill in the gaps, basically, and you've got your webinar content. And then I'm going to put everybody who is still on the call at the end I'm going to tell you how you can enter a draw for a free one-to-one -one session with me um, a strategy session but you have to still be at the end uh, be present at the end of the call in order to qualify for that alrighty so 12 reasons why you should be running webinars and Joe has mentioned a lot already first of all it's cheaper than live events a lot of people used to sell all the a-listers they used to sell by putting on, and they still do sell, by putting on live seminars. And they use the live seminar to uh, sell their products. The big problem with that is, number one, you've got to fill a seminar room. And believe me, it's a lot harder than filling a webinar. Uh, you've got all the costs involved of hiring a room. You, you, you've got the embarrassment factor that people might, you know, m people might not show up. You know, if you've only got three people on your webinar, it's a bit of a bummer, but at least you don't look an idiot because nobody else knows. You know? I remember one guy um, who was teaching about webinars said that his first webinar had two attendees. 
one was his mum and the other was his dog, <laughs> you know, but nobody, you know, nobody knew that, he was just practicing. Um, so, it, you know, it, it's a really good way of doing it. The other thing, these multi, uh, num point number two, these multi-speaker uh, uh, events, a lot of the people who might be there are there to listen to one of the other speakers. So you don't know how many people in that room are your audience um, and how many of them are there for you. You can be sure that when you've got a webinar going on that um, they're all there to listen to you because it's your webinar so they've, they, they've tuned in to listen to you. It's also easy to engage people um, with a webinar because you can ask questions, you can get them to put their hands up and all that kind of thing. Um, the other thing that you've got is that it's definitely um, a lower risk for a lot of people than speaking on stage. Now, this could not necessarily be true for everybody. As Joe said, sometimes if you're used to speaking live, speaking to a blank screen can feel a bit awkward. But for a lot of people who are nervous about public speaking, it isn't as scary as facing a big audience. So it's lower risk. Here's the, another point. It's easier to follow up with people. At a live event, as soon as they've walked out the room, that's it, they're gone. If you're clever about the registration process, yes, you get them on a list, but it's far easier to engage people using the method that you engage them with in the first place. So if you've engaged with them in a physical environment, it's actually harder to then keep that relationship going online. Whereas if you've engaged with them online, it's easier to build that relationship and keep that relationship going online. It is just one other weapon in your marketing arsenal. You want to be doing other things as well, but as Joe said, so many <clears throat> people are making big sales off the back of webinars. I know some of my mentors who've made 30, 40,000 pounds or <clears throat> something like 60, 70,000 dollars just off the back of one webinar. In fact, there was one webinar that I was attending, which was, they were selling a thousand dollar product and there were over a hundred people on the, on, you know, who actually bought because I actually joined that program and there were a hundred and four of us in the program. So you do the maths, that's a hundred and four thousand uh, dollars from one webinar. You know, it's extraordinary what you can do, which is fantastic. You can be really flexible in your message. You can create energy and excitement. A lot of people say, well, what about using videos? Videos are great, and that is something that I'm going to be covering in a different webinar. But in webinars, you can create more engagement because you can get people to you know, um, raise their hands. You can generate more energy and excitement when you've got a live audience there than you can when you're just speaking to a camera and, it's, you know, and that's it. It's just a camera and there's nobody else there. The two most important points, though, are it grows your list. I cannot tell you that, um, the growth in my list by running just this webinar tonight on webinars. It's obviously been a very popular topic, and my list has grown by an extra 50% just by running this one webinar, which you know is, is fantastic. And finally, it earns you money, like I've kind of pushed that point already. So those are all the reasons that you need to be uh, running it. So let's have a look at how to do it. Now, the big overwhelming thing that's come through in all the questions is it seems hard, it seems daunting, uh, but actually it's as easy as A, B, C. So let, let's have a look at these. Now, the first point, A, if you don't do this point, basically you, you will be doing a lot of work and you'll be banging your head against a brick wall. You won't be able to get the clients you want, you won't be able to make a difference to the amount of people that you want, and you won't be able to make that difference to your income. So would you agree with me that in order to attract more clients, you need to be a leader? Raise your hands if you agree. To you know, make really stand out from the crowd, you need to be a leader. Fantastic. Lots of hands going up there. Good. In order to be a leader, you need to have followers, right? And having followers creates social proof. Now, here is what you're aiming for, because the great thing about webinars is people talk about them afterwards. You know, they make comments and all of that kind of thing. So write this down. This is the first point. What you want is for your webinars is an audience sellout. Um, 
if you don't sell the webinar out, it's kind of a lot of hard work and you feel very flat and frustrated. Um, I was absolutely delighted to you know, find this webinar oversubscribed by you know, um, nearly six times in the end, which was fantastic. How many of you or have ever been on or experienced being stood up on a date? Stick your hands up if you if you know somebody that, that you might be more inclined to stick your hand up if you know somebody. But if you can imagine what it would be like to be stood up on a date if you haven't experienced it yourself, can you all imagine that at least? It's kind of pretty depressing really isn't it you get ready you spend loads of time in preparation you get there and you know it's, it's one of those things that you sit there at the table and you're waiting for them to turn up and you go and get a drink and you're waiting for them to turn up and they don't arrive and you think well what's happening you know and it's kind of depressing when they don't turn up it's a bit like that if you don't do the audience sellout bit so do you want to be stood up on your webinar date? Okay, raise your hand for me if you do not want to be stood up and you would like your webinar dates to actually show up. <laughs> Stick your hands up if that's what you prefer instead. Fantastic. Okay, you're not asleep yet then. Okay, good, good, good. Um, now then, what happens is if you fill your webinar, the knock-on effect of that is you are going to fill your client base. If you fill your client base, the knock-on effect of that is that it's going to fill your bank account. So you might want to write that down because this is really key, guys. If you fill your webinar, you'll fill your client base. If you fill your client base, you'll fill your bank, bank account. Okay, so how do we sell our, our webinars then, what are the tactics we're going to use? Right, I hope you've got um, a pen and paper ready because you need to be scribbling down on the handout that I gave you. 15 traffic techniques. First of all, email list. Quite simply, you write your email list. Now, I did this to fill my webinars uh, really successfully when I first started out because, it, you know, th this was my main method. I'd attracted a list using a free report on an opt-in page and I also had a mobile phone app that helped to uh, get those opt-ins as well. And I just wrote to my email list. And, you know, it was great because some of them joined, a lot of them didn't, but a lot of them did as well. So use your email list. And don't be afraid to write your email list and write to them to a free webinar. And this is, this is what's great. If you've got a product you want to sell, if you just sell, send an email to your list saying, please buy my product, it comes across as really heavy. If you send um, an email to your list saying, please join, join me on this free webinar where you're going to give some valuable content, sure, you're going to sell at the end of it, but it doesn't come across so heavy. So it's really you know, brilliant. You, you know, you're giving value and it's a win-win. The other thing that you should do is email your other contacts as well. You know, everybody knows people, right, outside of your list. You've got your friends, you've got other people, and remember, they might be interested. Don't automatically discount your friends and your family and all your biz other business contacts. You know, you've been perhaps out to business breakfast, you've collected a whole load of business cards, you've been to other seminars. Send them the details of your webinar as well. One of the best is a Facebook event. How many of you have got a nice shed load? I'll just put your hands down again. Raise your hand if you've got a nice shed load of friends on your Facebook account. How many of you got a load of friends on Facebook? Yes? Cool. All right. Fantastic. So set up a Facebook event and invite all your friends. And the first time I started doing this, I was just picky about who I thought might be interested. No. I got bored with that after a while. And I just thought, oh, I'll, I'll invite everybody. Just and I went down the list. Click, 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 click. And you can also get a script that makes this automatic for you. Invite everybody. I have been really surprised who, out of my Facebook friends, have come along to my webinars. And, you know, I met them at salsa dancing. You know, I didn't know they were interested in, in public speaking. They're my buddies from salsa dancing. So that's a really good way of doing it as well. Okay. Uh, a Google Plus event. You get a different crowd of people hanging out on Google Plus than you do on Facebook. 
Facebook. So do exactly the same thing. The next thing, back to Facebook again, but use a promoted post. I was astonished by the extra reach of spending 10 or 15 dollars on a promoted post and that really drove people to my Facebook event where they then signed up for the webinar too. Use Facebook ads and pay per click. That's another way of getting people to to you know and, and what you can do there is you can either send them straight to the opt-in page for the webinar or you can send them to the Facebook event where they can get all the details. Now Facebook kind of likes anything that's directed back to Facebook, so very often it's a good strategy to send them to the Facebook event and then you tell them all the details about the event on the Facebook page and then you send them off to the registration for the webinar from there. It's a really good way of doing it. Okay, another one, post on LinkedIn. It's one of those areas where because it's not perhaps as interactive sometimes as Facebook and Google, you can forget about it, but it's becoming more and more so now. And in fact, I'm beginning to get a lot of interest through LinkedIn. It's something I've overlooked in the past, but it is brilliant for um, particularly for people in business and it's something that should definitely be included as well. Obviously, you post on Twitter, that pretty much speaks for itself. I'm not going to go on about that. Now another one which a lot of people may not be doing but is really useful is to post on Pinterest. So what you do is whatever your, your field is, make some nice pretty pictures and posters with a tip. Uh, this is actually a tip that I got from, uh, from the lovely Joe Barnes. I put up some uh, nice pictures with uh, tips on public speaking and I posted them on Pinterest and I also put on there the link to the free webinar as well and that was a great strategy for me and worked really well. Alright, the next one then, YouTube videos. Now YouTube are amazing, it's quite funny actually because I just hosted my opt-in video on YouTube and you will be astonished at how many extra people came just because they found my YouTube video because I had people who found me and subscribed to my uh, YouTube channel and they came direct from YouTube so you always make sure that you get a video when you opt in and you host it on YouTube. Now this has got to be the biggest one, um, JV Partners. Uh, it's certainly true to say that the reason that my webinar this evening was you know six times over subscribed with the registrants was because uh, Joe has promoted this for me and helped me to promote it and give me ideas. It is the fastest way. Now, the thing is, you can't just necessarily write to people and say, "Will will you, you know, promote my webinar for me?" Because they get people asking that all the time. So there are certain things you have to do to get on board with JV Partners. Now, I don't have time to go into all the ins and outs of how you do that tonight. But later on, like I said, when I tell you about the opportunities of working with me, that is something that I will be going into in a lot of detail. Finally, forums. If, if you know, there's always forums, not just in Facebook, but professional bodies, for example. Um, you know, the coaching industry, which is what I'm part of. There's loads of forums, so you go and post in there, answer questions, and then then you can start, you know, dropping it in that you're running a free webinar. Remember, you're not selling, so a lot of people will be quite happy with you. It, it, it's good manners to get permission from the moderators to tell people about your free webinar, but it's a brilliant place to find new people. And finally, um, oh, not finally, you've got a couple more yet. Uh, you've got uh, solo ads, you can actually buy, uh, basically what you do there is rather than find a JV and work as a partnership, you just find somebody and say, right, well, okay, I'll pay you to send it to your list. <laughs> okay, it's as simple as that. And Chamber of Commerce are good at doing this, actually. Um, I've done that before in the past when I was selling offline training and that worked really well. Finally, you do have live networking. Remember when you go to a business breakfast or a Chamber of Commerce lunch or something, you can take the details of your webinar, but what you can also do is you can uh, take their business card and say, right, if you're interested, or, and then what you do is you manually enter them in because you've got their permission to do so. Um, 
so, so you can capture people that way. That's um, a, a really clever way. Rather than saying, go home and sign up, just say, if you're interested, give me your business card. Um, you can do a little prize draw for, from the business cards that you collect, which you can give away there and then, maybe a, you know, an hour's free coaching session or something of that nature. Uh, and then you've got all the cards that you can enter onto your webinar. And finally, you just um, get your opt-in page um, coming up in the search engine rankings. Now, obviously, for techie people, that's great. For non-techie people, that might be something that's a bit more difficult. My my SEO is pretty basic. There are pl various plugins that you can get which help. But actually, I'm saying that. Strangely enough, um, I was putting everything together earlier on today because uh, I've just got my little... Um, uh, opportunity that I'm going to be sharing with you a bit later on <laughs> and somebody's actually joined me and I haven't even launched it yet so that must be something that I've done with the SEO they've actually found my page and said yes please I'm in <laughs> so how cool is that everybody you know so there are lots of different ways to fill your web and you may not be able to do them all but you don't need to just pick a few of them and get going on it and how you sell out your audience. Now, this next point, you know, A, B, C, we're on to B now. If you don't do this, again, it's going to be one of those things where you're going to look a bit like an amateur. And it could be the difference between having zero sales and having mega sales. Okay. So, I'm sure none of you want to look like an amateur when you do start running your first webinars. You've already agreed with me that in order to be successful you need to build that credible authority status. So, you know, it, it, webinars are the great tool to build your status, you know, as that expert. So, who would agree with me also that in order to do that, it's really important that you make a fir good first impression. Stick your hands up if you think that it's important to make a good first impression when you're running your webinars. Yeah, again, lots of hands going up. Thank you, Amir. Thank you, Andy. Thank you, Angela. Um, thank you, Amir. Um, I've got loads of people. Thank you, Winona. Okay, so lots of people agreeing with me that it's important to make a good first impression. Now, here's the thing. A great first impression comes from a great webinar, but a great webinar comes from great preparation. Okay? So, what we need to do for our preparation is we're going to build and then deliver our webinar. And there's a few different points to this. First of all, you need to choose your platform. And that is something that we are going to look at right now. So, in order to get the right platform, you're probably going to need to spend a little bit of time doing some research, okay? The other thing is, there are these mistakes that I've told you about to avoid. I'm going to give you number one key insight, and I'm going to help you to keep them with you. So, let's have a look at the platforms then, okay? Again, I haven't got time to do massive amounts of um, uh, reviews here. But first of all, I'm going to talk about GoToWebinar because that's the one that we're using tonight. Now, as Joe said, it's not the cheapest uh, on the market. In fact, it was the price that actually put me off using GoToWebinar for quite some time because compared to a lot of the others, it, was, it did seem to me to be quite pricey. But let me tell you, it is worth every penny. <clears throat> The thing is with GoToWebinar, it is probably the easiest out of all of them to use. The registration, set, the setup of the webinar is simple. There are so few steps to actually setting up the webinar, it really is child's play. Believe me, if you've set up an opt-in page, if you've set up anything using WordPress, if you've, you know, even if you can use Word or whatever the equivalent is on a Mac, you can set up a webinar within GoToWebinar. It really is quite easy. Um, it's also reliable. It's also, it's one of these things. Social proof is really important, guys. Um, all the big A-listers use GoToWebinar. Now, that should tell you something. And you want to be seen as being professional like the big A-listers. So, if you're using GoToWebinar, it really is a key social proof point that actually you are also professional. Does that make sense? 
Um, but you know, it's it's not for everybody. Maybe some people are just starting out, and then they don't want to spend you know the, what it costs on go to webinar. Now, here's let me give you uh, this. I'll probably get into trouble for saying this, but you know, I'm sure there's nobody from go to webinar actually listening. If you're struggling with thinking that it's too expensive, one thing that I did, you can get a free trial for 30 days, and when that runs out, you just take another free trial using a different email address. <laughs> it's um, And you can actually go a few times on that before they cotton on and kind of realize that actually you're the same person. So <laughs> do give GoToWebinar a try. Now, another one that I used when I first started out, which was cheaper than GoToWebinar, was Instant Teleseminar. Now, Instant Teleseminar uh, guys who pretty much started out, as the name suggests, as doing um, teleseminars rather than webinars, but then they expanded out and started using um, webinars too. They were also very easy to use uh, in, as, in terms of setting it up, but I have to say they weren't that easy to use when it came to actually running the webinar itself. Uh, you you had real trouble sometimes moving from slideshow to using uh, questions to using you know uh, speaking to webcam and all that kind of stuff. It really was quite tricky. So it's not you know it, it was it was great to play with to start with, but it's not something I would use again. Okay. I want to talk now about evergreen business system. There are two types of ever, evergreen business system. There's what we call automated. Now, the great thing about an automated webinar is you don't even have to run it live. How cool is that? You can put together a video, and you can have as many takes as you like, getting that video right, and then you can set it up in a webinar. Now. <clears throat> A lot of people set the webinar up, and, and certainly the software gives you the uh, ability to make it appear as though it is live. Personally, I wouldn't do that, because these days, authenticity and transparency is actually quite important. Uh, and if you're found out that they think it's live and it's actually not, that can actually damage your reputation. Sure, if you, know, if you feel comfortable with that, then fine, give that a go. But what you can do is you can give people the choice, and you just don't have to say it's live, but very often people will assume it's live, and then you're not pulling the wool over anybody's eyes. That's just them you know, making their own assumptions. When I use it, I actually make it quite clear that it's not live, you know, that they're listening to a replay or whatever. But it's a really good way if you are really struggling with the idea of running something live. It gives you that comfort zone until you start getting used to it. Alternatively, Evergreen Business Systems have now got a live um, webinar platform too, and it looks something like this, and this is something that I do like using. It is fabulous to work with. The only thing is it can be clunky to set up, and it can be clunky to get into. It has let me down a couple of times on actually getting into the webinar room. Down here in this bottom right-hand corner, you've got the webinar room that you're in, and a couple of times when people, other people have logged in and mine hasn't let me into the right room and I've had to cancel the webinar, which is not great when you're trying to set up your um, client list and you know, build, build up a reputation. Uh, but it is something which is fantastic. If you, one of the things I loved about it was I could talk to camera as well as having my slides showing. The chat box was nice and big. Um, and, and, and it didn't kind of get in the way. You could have the attendee lists. This, this was actually while I was preparing. I didn't tell. I've still got my specs on here. Look, <laughs> uh, it was actually before people had started logging on. Um, but when they log on, you can see uh, all the attendees. And what I loved about it was you get the little flags of the countries as well, which is really cool. Um, that it's a lot, lot cheaper than go to webinar. I think it's something like uh, $19 a month for 200 seats. So it is a really good alternative. The only thing is you have to log in really early to make sure that you don't have problems getting into the room at the crucial time. And finally, you've got anymeeting.com. Now, anymeeting.com is free. Uh, the only thing is it has adverts on it. And as of at the end of this month, 
Uh, you can't record any meeting under the free version. You can only record your webinar if it is um, uh, if you take out the paid pro subscription with them. Then again, if you've got something like Camtasia or ScreenFlow, you can just record it yourself. So if you're sort of thinking, oh my goodness, in setting my business up, I've got all of these things that I need to sort out, then any meeting could be a good starting point for you. Okay, and again, you know, um, if you work with me a little bit further, I can go into webinar platforms and help you to decide which is the best one for you. All right, so that's the platform. Now let's have a look at the seven mistakes that you need to avoid. I'm going to run through these quite quickly. Quite simply, big silences. I remember I attended several webinars where the organizer was trying to look at the um, either the questions or was trying to look for something different, like they're going to show uh, a video or share their screen and there's this big silence. Now Jo is an absolute master at this because when she wants to go to questions and she wants to concentrate what's in the questions box, she'll just say, okay guys, I'm just having a look in questions and she just talks to you while she's doing that. So you don't want great big silences where people think that you know, you've been cut off or something. A big mistake is not rehearsing. Certainly this was a mistake I made at first, not because I couldn't be bothered, but a lot of the time I just didn't give myself enough time. You do need to give yourself enough time to set it all up so that you can rehearse things. If you don't rehearse things and you haven't got the technology sorted out, it means you get your timings wrong and you're um, not able to spend time telling people what you want to tell them at the end or you, you haven't got time to do the Q and A. Another tip on that, by the way, I used to try and pack out the whole thing into an hour, whereas if you tell people now that it's an hour and a half, you can kind of spend a whole hour giving content and then you can do your questions and all of that kind of thing, you know, after you've given an hour of, of really great content. Very often you can forget your audience is there and start talking to yourself, especially if you're struggling with the technology. Then again, you know, um, it, it's one of those things that I just said, it's better to talk to yourself rather than have big silences. But you do really want to make sure that you are engaging with your audience and, and we'll come on to how you do that in a little tick. Big mistake is you suddenly put a kind of robot head on and go into presenter mode. You don't want to do that. You just have a conversation with people. So many people lose their personality when they go into presenter mode. And they try and, you know, be like a newsreader. Good evening. <laughs> you know where I'm coming from. So don't go into presenter mode. Just be yourself and talk to, talk to your audience as though you were talking to your mate over a cup of coffee. Another big mistake is absolutely overfilling slides with loads of text, loads of diagrams and all that kind of thing. Um, now, if you're using a webcam, a big mistake is never looking into it. Now, obviously, when you've got a webinar going on, you've got lots of things that you need to do. You know, you do need to advance your slides. You do need to have a look in your dashboard and see what's going on. But occasionally, you do need to remember to actually look into the camera as well and make sure that you're making eye contact with your audience too. Okay, so those are the seven mistakes. What I'm going to come on to now is the one key insight, and I'm so excited to reveal this. Right, this probably, guys, is the most um, inspiring thing that I've learned recently, and the thing that's going to make the biggest difference to you when you're running your webinars. Okay, are you ready for this? Put your content into a system. Now, I can't tell you what a difference this makes to how you come across in terms of being that credible authority in your field. Oh, and this is this actually is something that I have just learned this last weekend. <laughs> so I frantically was changing some of my webinar content. Um, in the past, I was talking about my speaking topics quite separately. So I would talk about overcoming the fear of speaking. I would talk about um, speaking to sell. I would talk about just putting easy presentations together. But you know what? They all interconnect. Now, let's say, for example, I don't know, you're... Um, a weight loss coach. There are lots of, uh, of of parts of losing weight. You know, you you've got things like exercise, you've got diet, you've got nutrition, you've got you know the, getting the right sleep, you've got hydration and all that kind of stuff. Um, 
and if you put that into a system that people can find it easy to connect with it's going to make life so much easier for them and not only that all the big um, leaders use models so think about Abraham Maslow's uh, hierarchy of needs you've got um, uh, Stephen Covey's seven habits of highly effective people you've you've got uh, the cash flow quadrant you know they're all business models so guess what I did I put mine into a business model and this is something that I'm going to be launching in June and because it's a model and I'm putting everything together I'm going to be launching this at $497 and it looks kind of quite cool doesn't it but you can see how everything interconnects now I could just sell a webinar um, little product separately you know but actually in order to do the webinar you do need all of this other stuff um, and then there's overlap then between that and videos and it all becomes a bit messy so you know I do encourage you to put your stuff into a system okay finally how are you going to keep people with you well there are five little tips on how to keep your audience with you first of all asking questions I've been asking you questions all the way through and asking you to raise your hand if you agree with me uh, it's a good way of making sure that people are w actually paying attention and that they haven't you know gone off to sleep or uh, you know gone off to make a cup of tea and all that kind of stuff uh, and next thing that you can do is to you know, use a fill in the blanks handout so what you do is you uh, again I sent one to you if people are writing stuff down they're engaged even if they're just filling in the blanks in the handout that you've sent them yes it's great to encourage people to take notes and I used to do that a lot but actually if you give them a page specifically on which to write their notes it's much more likely that they're going to write stuff down and if they're writing stuff down they are going to be much more um, engaged with you when, as you're going through you can use polls you can ask people um, to vote on uh, on certain things or you can find out you know what their background is so you can get get an information on, on your audience that way and again have a bit of variety in your delivery you know don't be boring <laughs> you know use your voice to t and your energy to take things up and then bring them down again you know um, and, and just have a variety of what you're telling people and and this is the other thing as well if you put your stuff into a system it's less likely that you'll be boring because they can see exactly where you are rather than getting lost in the whole of an hour-long presentation okay finally you tease the content out now I told you that webinars are as easy as ABC and I but I didn't tell you what they were <laughs> so if you know and, and then you just reveal them as you go along because people are kind of thinking oh well I want to know what that is so basically you tease tease your content out because that makes people want to listen more it's a bit like that cliffhanger you know the end of every EastEnders episode or at the end of um, you know uh, and, and any two or three part drama alrighty so that's how you keep them with you so just to recap on the old build and deliver you need to choose your platform you want to avoid some of the key mistakes you want to make sure that you're putting your content into a system and you want to make sure that you keep your people with you alrighty so we've had the audience sell out and the build and deliver we've had A and B and now we're moving on to the C now this is the most important thing of all okay if you fail to do this everything that you've done so far will be a waste of time nothing's going to change you'll still be broke you'll still not be walking your talk um, or it, you know you, you certainly won't be where you want to be so how many of you would agree with me that in order to run a really good webinar you want to be giving great value you want to be giving great content stick your hands up with me if you agree yeah some hands going up come on let's have a few more hands I think some of you are going to sleep let me know you're there stick your hands up lovely jubbly yes so you'd agree with me that you need good value content okay fantastic now stick your hands up that if you also agree that while you're giving this great value and great content you actually want to make some money too so stick your hands up if you agree with that as well yo the hands up went a lot faster this time <laughs> okay 
Well, the thing is, you need to learn how to monetize your webinars, yeah? So what we're going to be doing here is making sure that we cash in on them. Because if you don't, and this is where most newbie presenters struggle, it's where people, when they first start doing webinars, they struggle. I know I certainly struggled with this. But the thing is, and you might want to write this down, there are no blanks on your handout to, to um, fill in, but you might want to write this down, sort of scribble it up in the top left-hand corner or something. Applause is good. Profit is better. There's nothing more frustrating than doing a job and not getting paid for it. I mean, can you imagine what it's going to be like? Let's say you build a website for one of your customers or, I don't know, you do whatever it is you do and, you know, you work with a customer and then they say, well, no, I'm not going to pay you. You wouldn't stand for that, would you? You know, imagine if you're working for a company and at the end of the month the company says, well, no, we're not going to pay for you. Um, you know, I think you think you should do it as a freebie for us this month. No, no way. And it, it can get you can actually get quite frustrated if you keep on doing really great content and people don't buy from you. You can kind of start thinking, well, hang on a minute, am I a bit of a mug or what? You know, what's going on here? So you really want to make sure that you cash in. So raise your hand if you can relate to what I'm saying. I'm going to stick them all down first. Raise your hand if you can relate to what I'm saying about, you know, you've been maybe giving fabulous content. You've been doing, you know, maybe you've been running webinars or maybe you've been um, even just giving out your free offers. Yeah, so far you've been giving out free offers, uh, but it's frustrating because you haven't been able to get people to buy from you yet. Raise your hands if you've kind of uh, experienced that frustration. Yeah, again, got loads of hands going up. Fantastic. All right, so are you going to carry on giving endless content then without being paid for it? Or are you going to start getting paid what you're worth? Because every single one of you out there listening has got some great talents and gifts to share, but you deserve to get paid for them. Now, this is the thing as well. You have to create a mindset in your customers. Because the amount of investment equals the level of transformation. You might want to write that down as well. The amount of investment often equals the level of transformation. So if people have got stuff for free, how likely is it that they're going to act on it? Yeah, I mean, it's, in personal development terms, how many times have you got free stuff? You know, you've had you've got the free download of Think and Grow Rich, or you've got a free download of this, or a free download of that. And it just goes on the shelf, yeah? This, this, this isn't called self-development. This is called shelf development. So, you know, but if, if you've invested some money, you're more likely to use it, right? Yes? Would you agree with me? Um, hang on, put your hands back down. So stick your hands up if you agree with me that if you've, you know, spent money on buying something, the more you've spent, the more likely you are that you think, hang on a minute, I want to return on my investment. I'm going to flipping well make sure that I do this and make it work, yeah? So um, stick your hands up if you, yeah, loads of hands going up, fantastic. So what you have to do is make sure that you cash in. So let's have a look how we're going to do that. Well, first of all, you can do exactly what I'm doing tonight. You do a free webinar, which is show and tell content. And then at the end, you can perhaps give a little sale. And it doesn't have to be big. You know, in fact, I'm going to give you a little bit of a hint here. What I'm going to be doing is certainly not going to be something which is going to be a massive investment for you, but it's going to be something that tells me that you're serious about, you know, taking your business to the next level and actually making webinars a tool to help you get there. Okay, you can do interview with the expert. So let's say, for example, you don't actually have the confidence to speak live, you can host a webinar, get an expert in your field on, that's fantastic value. And again, what you can do is the same kind of thing at the end, you can, you know, make, you can either make it a sale at the end, or you can actually charge people to come on that webinar. Now, I love this idea, this is a method that I only heard about recently, and this is the broker method. It's a bit like interview the expert, except that what you're doing is you're putting two people together. You're putting somebody together who's got a big list, and then you're putting them together with an expert, and you're just facilitating the whole thing. So you're not even having to kind of do the interviewing. You, you know, get the person with the list to do that and get an expert in. Uh, an example where this happened, there was a guy who was a vet, 
and what he did was um, th uh, the vet professional body that he was a member of wanted um, you know everybody had to have continuing professional development so he went to the professional body the vet professional body and said I I know an expert in whatever it was and basically said would your people be interested in this as continuing professional development and they said yeah that would be brilliant fantastic and what he did was he said well we'll charge for that you know normally if they were going to go to a, um, a CPD event they'd have to go to a hotel and all that malarkey and it would normally have cost them I don't know say $200 so he said well we'll, we'll charge less and you know get them on and then in the end what they did is they actually got these events sponsored by a pharmaceutical company whereby they then charged the governing body something like 5000 which was funded by the you know $5000 he was getting paid to run this webinar and he didn't even have to do anything apart from um, basically set it up and rake the money in i mean how cool is that i love that idea the next thing is it's great for content creation you can put free webinars together and then you can record them and then afterwards you can get say six of them together and sell them as a series it is brilliant for that method and then you haven't got to spend all that time even writing you know the content separately uh, you could uh, alternatively um, have a paid webinar series that people set up which is live so it's a bit like the content creation where you you know sell them as a series but you actually um, put a series of webinars together which are going to be live but, but but people pay for them and then finally as I've already mentioned you've got these perpetual evergreen webinars so you do a live webinar um, and then at the end of it you set it up as evergreen and then you just keep you know you, you put it up onto every occasionally now and again you put it on social media uh, do a bit of search engine optimization around it and it is there forever and then you're really really then um, making money while you sleep so how cool is that if you think you can use one of those ways uh, or even maybe more of one of those ways to um, get webinars going stick your hands up for me please who thinks that they could use one of those methods at least to start setting yourself up as a credible authority in your field and to getting that expert status and then monetizing your webinars fantastic okay brilliant Alrighty, now uh, I did mention that I was going to tell you how you can work further with me. Now, the thing, now this is what's really cool. In the past, I would have said, right, now I'm going to tell you about a little product that I put together all about how you can use webinars, but I'm not going to do that because as I said when I was telling you about my system, webinars really need to be put into part of a bigger model. In order to run webinars, yes, you need to know the techie stuff, but as well as running the techie stuff, you need to have confidence in speaking. You need to know how to put great content together. You need to know how to deliver it. You need to know how to do the selling aspect of it, and then you need to start small and continually keep improving it. But what's great is what you learn about that, you can then repeat to a certain extent with just a few small tweaks in videos and the same for using it on stage and in meetings now this this whole system that I'm going to be putting together includes everything that you need to do that I've, I'm going to be uh, launching with my five easy steps to perfect presentations which helps you to literally go through a step by step, step system and I've got templates and everything to help you do that I've got my complete Befriending the Bear of Public Speaking program, which is eight modules all about overcoming the fear of public speaking and to get you, get you really going. I've got seven steps to profitable presentation. So this now is how you actually start working the sale. Um, I'm going to be putting together a whole massive amount of stuff on Wicked Webinars. I'm going to be teaching you how to sell from the stage, how to network for business. I'm going to be, you've got confidence videos. I'm going to be teaching you how to give your perfect elevator pitch and more. Now here's the thing. I did say that I wasn't going to be selling this system because I'm not selling it, in fact, until June. But because as yet it is incomplete, I am giving a special offer of only 
so what's going to happen is at the moment the system currently has everything that you need for speaking on stage it's got all the confidence stuff all the content stuff all the charisma stuff all the selling stuff I've got partial stuff on how to run webinars which I'm going to be adding to and then later on I'm going to be adding these other bits the videos the continuous improvement and how to do it in meetings and then everything that's in here I'm going to be improving and improving and improving with new videos new tutorials and all that now if you get on board at $97 you are going to get everything that people who pay $497 later on are going to get because you will get all the improvements and all the updates but to do so you need to um, get on board by end of midnight on Friday that's this Friday the 24th of May so how cool is that so that gives you plenty of time to decide but some of you I know are going to be kind of quite um, quick at making decisions and as it happens it's my birthday tomorrow how now I'm gonna put your hands back down raise your hands if you all want to wish me a happy birthday <laughs> cool oh that's nice thank you I've got lots of hands going up wishing me a happy birthday well I'm actually going to give you a birthday gift because if you decide that you would like this system you'd like to learn not only about how to do webinars but you know really really well but all the rest I'm going to make sure that you get this product for just $47. Hang on. Oh, I forgot my money back guarantee. That's the other thing. If you're not happy with this, then I'm going to give you a money back guarantee. But there you go. That's my birthday offer. Chocolate cake and all. <laughs> I, I am going to give you the opportunity to get that whole system. And you'll only have to wait four to six weeks max to get your hands on all the improvements in the entire system and you're going to get it for only $49 but to do that you need to apply um, or not apply you need to buy it basically by tomorrow um, at midnight and that's um, oh, I was going to say British time but uh, yeah as long as you do it by midnight whatever time it is where you are in the world then that will do I'll kind of work it out so the if you want to that the Earl is there now what I'm going to do I'm just going to come out with a presentation in a minute so I can give you the links. Bear with me while I do this. I'm going to stick it into chat. Bring this back up. Okay, there you go. There is the link for you to kind of get that at $49. Now, Obviously, that is a great deal, and it's a be a birth, my birthday gift to you, and it's obviously going to be your birthday gift to me if you come on board, because that would be fantastic. But some people are even faster action takers, and because at the end of the day, it's only $49, and for what you're going to get, I can't tell you the difference it's going to make to your um, business. You are going to be able to go to any live networking event. You're going to be able to run webinars. You're going to be able to do videos. You're going to be able to, you know, really excel in meetings. And I was talking about continuous improvement and how important it is to work with fantastic mentors. I have just spent four days with the with basically the guy who is the best professional not just public speaking but professional speaking um, coach in the world uh, you may have heard of him he's called Andy Harrington and believe me what this guy knows is just phenomenal and of course as a student I will be even improving my knowledge and being able to pass that on to you guys as well better than that if you apply before midnight tonight so you've only got about an hour <laughs> to do this not only am I going to give you oh let's go back into um, slides not only am I going to give you the $49 but you'll get a one-to-one -one strategy session with me for 30 minutes and this is so exciting as being part of Andy Harrington's um, uh, academy, I have got my hands on two tickets for his Power to Achieve live weekend event. This is a phenomenal event, ladies and gentlemen. It is totally life-changing. Uh, he's actually got this 
coming up next weekend, and I'm planning on going next weekend myself. The next one that he's doing is November, so you can choose which of which of those that you go on. He charges eight hundred and ninety-five pounds, and that's pounds, not dollars. So you're looking at about fifteen hundred dollars each ticket. And I'm going to give away two tickets to anybody who actually buy. Well, I'm going to put you into a draw because um, <laughs> I've only got two tickets, so or two spare tickets. So I can't, you know, give this obviously to everybody who. Um, uh, buys tonight, but if you buy tonight, I will make sure that you go into a prize draw, and somebody from that prize draw is going to get these two wonderful free tickets to Andy Harrington's Power to Achieve. And you put that together with learning everything that you want to learn about my speaker system, and believe me, your business is going to take off. It really, really is. Okay, so that is really excitingly cool. Right. Um, we've got to the bit now where I can take questions from you. So what I'm going to do is just have a little scroll through some of the questions that we've got live. And uh, again, don't leave the webinar yet because I, I've also yet to give you how you get your hands on the special free template and uh, also how to you know, get your hands on a free session with me regardless of whether you buy anything or not. So you know, stay to the end to get your free template and your chance to go into a draw to win a one-to-one -one session with me as well. Uh, okay, so I'm just going to expand the questions and have a little look. Okay, cool. Okay, is there a preferable time of the day to have a webinar uh, or or, and or day of the week, that's uh, Diane. Do you know what, Diane, that is a really good question. Uh, and it's something that's not that easy to answer, um, but I'm going to do my best, okay? Now, it does also depend on your niche. For example, uh, are your people business people? So do they, are they going to find it easy to perhaps listen during the daytime? So if, if your audience is self-employed people, they, you know, they might well think, well, no, I can do this in the daytime, and it's going to be a good time of the day for me to do it during the day. Or your audience might alternatively be employed, in which case you need to hold it either in the weekend or during an evening. A lot of webinars do take place in the evening because uh, even if people are running their own business, they can still do the evening. It depends on, you know, on, on who your target audience is. You know, if you're, say, a parenting coach and you've got the whole getting the kids to bed thing, you know, th then it might not be a good time for them, and for them it might be better during the day. You've also got to think of different time zones. Now, I'm actually trying to cater for all time zones. I've got people on today from you know New Zealand and Australia. I've got people on from the States. Uh, poor Joe had to get up at four o'clock. Well, she had to get up before four o'clock to join us to uh, moderate this uh, in Thailand. So sometimes you might find that you need to actually run two webinars on the same day. I've done that in the past. You know, I did one webinar because I get a lot of people from. Um, India as well, so I did kind of one from India and Thailand right round to Australia, and then I did another one to, 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 to bring in the people from the States. Generally, you don't want to be doing things like, say, Friday evenings, you know, a lot of people kind of, hey, it's the weekend and we, you know, we're tired and we want to, or we want to go out and party. Saturday evenings, you know, not good, so if you're going to do a weekend, maybe during the day is better. Um, a lot of the most popular ones tend to be Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, but the only way really is to suck it and see. You know, find out you know where you get the best response from your particular audience. And um, I hope that's answered that question for you. Okay. Once I've created the contents, does the webinar provider set up the techie part? That is upload the slides and the audio. No, Jude, actually you have to do that yourself. The webinar provider just basically gives you the platform on which to do it. But that's where I come in because I can teach you how to do the webinar parts. Now, depending on the webinar platform, um, depends on how much tutorials you get. You know, the evergreen business system that I was talking to you about, in fairness, they have amazingly good videos. 
um, uh, run by a guy, bless him, Hector. He's, uh, he's Spanish, and his, his accent can be a bit heavy to understand at times, but they are really lovely uh, training tutorial videos. Uh, one of the things, if you come and join me on my program, is I'll be teaching you how to use GoToWebinar. So, you know, if you've used it before, just use a different email, it's, use a free trial, and I will teach you step by step how to set it up. So you do have to get your head around some of the techie parts, but it's easier than you think, Jude. Honestly, it really is. Okay, what if you don't think you have a profitable niche or you feel confident about interviewing others? That's a great question, Anne. Uh, yes, you do need to have a profitable niche. This is one thing that you've got to get sorted before you actually start because otherwise, again, you're wasting your breath and you're wasting your time. This is something that a lot of people in the coaching industry get wrong because they just try and do it on life coaching in general when you really want to be specific. Again, that's something that I can really help you with. I've got a whole section in the program in the system on how to find your niche. And this is something also that I can help you, you know, with in the half hour, you know, strategy session and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, coaches are addicted to webinars any time except five in the morning, yes? Yeah, absolutely. You, you can be webinared out um, if you're a coach and you're in this industry. Uh, but it's all about how you position it, how you get yourself across as that, you know, uh, expert. Uh, okay, let's see what are the questions. Do they need to be 60 minutes or can they be shorter? And did you say they don't have to be free? Absolutely. Oh, thank you, Kitty. She says, love this webinar. No, they don't have to be free, Kitty. You, a lot of people charge for a webinar. In fact, yes, you know, charge for a webinar. Why shouldn't you? Um, if you're just starting out, uh, and, and, and I'm, you know, um, you know, not exactly, you know, a big well-known name yet, so that's why I'm using both. I'm using some paid webinars, and I'm also using free webinars to get known. Uh, but no, they don't have to uh, be free at all. A lot of people charge anything from $47, $97 to even, you know, a couple of hundred dollars to attend a webinar. Um, okay. Uh, Teresa, you just said you've got an, oh, thank you, Teresa, you just joined us, uh, you've had a bit of an error message, okay, don't worry, I will sort all that out with you separately, so I'll look, thank you so much for coming on board, that's fantastic, okay, what if you're selling something that has to be actually sent by post, that is not a digital product, you can still arrange it to sell, send stuff out by post, um, that's Suzanne, Suzanne, yes, absolutely, you can still do webinars, I know a lot of people, one of my mentors, Nick James, um, he does a lot of um, uh, products which are not digital downloads, but you have to actually have the stuff in the post, and he uses that all the time. So he's very successful at using webinars to sell non-digital products. Uh, Rebecca, what are your thoughts on using Google Hangouts? Do you know what, Rebecca? I love the idea of Google Hangouts, and it's something that I'm definitely going to be looking into and including later on in my system. One of the drawbacks with Google Hangouts is that anybody can get on and um, they don't have to sign up to your list. Now. Okay, if you're selling a product which is absolutely amazing and it doesn't matter if they're on your list or not to join the webinar, then fine, who cares? They're a great informal way of running a webinar. Um, and they are so easy to use, it is untrue. And there are a massive amount of advantages to Google Hangouts. For start, you've got the whole fact that they're Google, and the SEO is phenomenal, and it's all linked to YouTube, and the recording of it is automatic, um, which is really useful because, <laughs> and I know, thank God for Joe and Neil, because I just re realized that I actually forgot to press my start recording button. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Google, Google, Google Hangouts are great because they'll, they'll do that all automatically for you. All right, fantastic. Um, other questions? Other questions? Yeah, our dentist was telling us that he attends paid webinars for his up-to-date training. Absolutely, Michelle. A bit like the whole vet thing. Oh, thank you, Mark. I don't know if that's Mars or, or uh, Mark. Oh, but he said happy birthday, Tina. Fabulous. Oh, I've had some lovely comments here about the webinar. Thank you, guys. Let's see if there are any question, any other questions. Signature system, yeah, of course. Oh, cool. We've got um, 
Susan Rose, that is my coaching niche, helping people to see what their system is. Uh, most can't do it alone. Fantastic. You can have a webinar all about systems. Um, mm -mm. Will your course be taught live? The actual, um, Daphne, that's a great question. The actual system that you're getting for $49 is a self-study. Uh, at some point later on, I will be giving the opportunity to upgrade and come on to a live training system where you get lots of my time and hand-holding as well. So the, um, the $49 system, once you buy into it, it's there immediately. So you can start working on the modules tonight if, you, if you're that way inclined. I mean, it's 20 past 11 here in the UK, so I doubt that the UK or Europe people would want to get started on the modules tonight. But if you're in the US and it's still afternoon or morning for you, midday or whatever, you could actually be reading all the stuff this afternoon. So it's a self-study. You don't have to wait for a series of webinars. Um, Okie dokie. So, okay, Winona says it's coming up as $97. Ah, yes, you see the $47, yeah. That's on the sales page, guys, because um, it's $97 if you do it before Friday the 24th. But if you do it by tomorrow, end of play tomorrow, it's only $47. So you do have to, yeah, Chris Morris, Andy Harrington rocks. He sure does, Chris. He's amazing. Um, where is it? Kathy, Kathy, what do you mean? Where is it? I don't understand. Oh, what country is the event? Um, no, the it's it, it's just self-study. It's a digital download products. Veronica already signed up. Thank you, Veronica. Uh, that's really cool. Oh, loads of people are saying um, uh, that they're signing up. Fantastic. Thank you. Okay, I can't. I'm not sure if I've missed any questions. I'm just kind of having a look through them. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Joe, have you got any comments you'd like to make or any questions that you'd like to, to, to kind of answer at this stage? Do you want to hop back on board and answer any questions? She's still there? <laughs> Hello, can you hear me? Cool, yes, I can Sorry, hear I you. Sorry, I, I couldn't unmute myself then, the thing wouldn't unmute. <laughs> Oh, you've got to have um, a cup of tea. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm off to have a cup of tea in a minute. So, um, how is everybody, guys? Did you enjoy that? Did you enjoy that fantastic webinar? I hope you did. Um, and uh, I just wanted to um, uh, just make this point, actually, to you all, just so that you know all those guys that have signed up. Um, this is not an affiliate webinar. I am not taking an affiliate commission for this. Um, I just wanted to obviously um, introduce you to Tina and bring Tina to you guys because uh, I know that she's going to give you some awesome, fantastic content. Um, so all you guys um, that have joined up, I know that you're going to have an amazing time. And I uh, hold you, every single one of you who signed up to Tina's program, I am absolutely watching you and I want to see you do it a live webinar within the next few months, okay? I want to see a live webinar as soon as possible from you all um, and uh, I shall be watching you. I shall be watching you. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, that's why, you know, and even if you don't join my program, with what you've learned already, get on and do a webinar. You know, what's the worst that can happen? And on that note, I have now put up the uh, slide and I've popped into the chat box how you get your hands on the getspeaking.com planning uh, template put my teeth back in, the planning template that I was telling you about uh, that will make it easier for you and for all of those of you who are still here, which is, I'm really chuffed because it's, there's only a few people who've said that they've had to go off and pick people up or go to bed or whatever um, it, the only other criteria now is you need to go to my Facebook uh, page and like it and if you're, at, if you're still here at the end, which you are and you like my page as well I will put you into a free draw to have a one-to-one -one with me where you can ask as many questions as you like and we can discuss your business strategy, your model, how to put it into a system and, and, and your webinar strategy um, uh, or whatever it is you want to talk about. So, um, cool. And, and thank you, Joe. I really you know, appreciate you giving me this opportunity. 
Absolutely my pleasure, Tina. Absolutely my pleasure. And uh, the webinar has been recorded, so uh, we'll be able to send out the replay as well uh, over the next uh, 24 hours. Um, <coughs> excuse me, you sound a bit croaky, guys. Uh, it's, uh, normally I've talked for an hour at this stage, so my voice has warmed up, but I've been sat here quiet in the background. Um, anyway, so I hope you've all really, really enjoyed this webinar. Great content, Tina. Thank you very much for presenting that. It was really good stuff. Um, and uh, if you haven't yet signed up for Tina's program, make sure you go and do that because I know you are just going to get absolutely superb and fantastic value. Um, okay, so if, any, if, if you guys have not got any more questions, I think it's time for Tina to go and get herself a glass of uh, wine or a cup of hot chocolate or something, and I'm going to go yeah, and get a cup of tea. A big, a big bar of chocolate with a, a, big, a big mug of hot chocolate and a big bar of chocolate to go with it. <laughs> oh my goodness, you'll never sleep. I know, and that's probably why I never do sleep, but, but that's my reward. <laughs> Sam just wants to know where the Andy Harrington event is next week. It's in London. It's at the Renaissance Hotel in London. All the details are on the, um, uh, on, on, uh, if you go over to the Get Speaking page, um, the, hang on, let me put it back up, uh, this page here, the Superb Speaking System, um, if somewhere where I'm telling you about the bonuses, you've got the details of the Andy Harrington, it takes you to his page, where you can see everything that he covers over the three days, it's Friday, Saturday and Sunday, and it, number one, it shows you everything he covers, and number two, it tells you that the price is 895 so, you know, this is not hype, this is genuine. Um, I because I signed up with his programs, I got, you know, a few free tickets, and I'm using, you know, some myself, and I thought it would be really cool to give the opportunity to somebody who takes my program. It's a shame I can only, you know, give two tickets away, but um, it's a, it will be an amazing event, so it's really worth doing it straight away to just be given a chance, because as, what, was it Chris, I think, said, Andy Harrington really does rock. So imagine if we had an event with Joe and Andy all on the same stage, how much people, and me of course, how much people would get from that event, we'll have to, you know, wouldn't that be cool? <laughs> hey, one day, one day, maybe when I'm back in the UK. Um, Craig also wants to know, is the training PDF or videos? Both. Um, uh, both, and, 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 and if, if it's not there in a, in a format that you want, let me know and I will provide it because this is this is why you're getting it for just $49 um, or 97 if you wait until after tomorrow because rather than the four I, I will be putting this together this is something that I'm working with with Andy Harrington's team on my speaking system and I'm looking for feedback so you know that's why you're getting it at this price because I want you to tell me what you like about it what you don't like about it how you want it different so if you get it in a format if, if you want it in a format that I'm not providing you just tell me and I'll sort it at the moment there's a lot of uh, written content uh, but one of the things that I'm going to be doing now that I've uh, you know um, uh, but I haven't done videos, a lot of videos up until now because I've struggled with the whole technology around videos, but I've got that cracked now, so I'll be adding lots of videos over the next few weeks. Also, Andy wants to know, do you cover traffic techniques to get people to the webinars? Yes, yes I do. Um, uh, in fairness, if you're already an SNA member, you've probably got more traffic techniques than you can shake a stick at from what Joe's providing, but yes, I'm going to be doing it specifically um, to use, you know, to, to webinars. Those, those 15 things that I like rattled off, there's a bit like a, a you know, um, a Gatling gun, I'm going to be going to those in a bit more detail. Good stuff. And where can people contact you for support about your products, Tina? Um, Tina at, it's a bit long, I'll type it in the chat box, Tina at the Online Public Speaking Academy. Anybody who does um, sign up, you get that automatically in the kind of welcome mail. But if anyone wants to ask me questions, I mean the other things, if you've just got questions about it, you can also go over to the Facebook page and um, put them there. Hang on, let me just type these in. Tina at the... It's one of those Good things stuff. I picked... 
uh, Go on, the sorry. Academy. I was just saying, I picked the online public speaking academy.com as a domain because it's good for SEO and it does what it says on the tin and it gets recognized, but it's an half long to type out. <laughs> <laughs> right, there you go, it's in. <laughs> so you can contact me on that email address, ask any questions, um, you know, ask questions on Facebook. Uh, I will be around specifically to take questions sort of tomorrow. Obviously tomorrow evening guys, I'm not going to be online because I'll be celebrating my birthday but I'll be there pretty much the whole of the day. I've just got a, um, a meeting in the afternoon that I've got to go to but apart from that I will be around So uh, and Facebook uh, as well which is why I'm kind of giving you guys till midnight uh, tomorrow um, You know, if, if you have got questions you want answered. I have to tell you, I'm thrilled. I've got loads of people joining me already, and that's fantastic. We are going to have a ball. We're going to have a ball, guys. We really are. And the other thing is, I'm going to set up a special Facebook group for us all as well. I forgot to mention that. Fantastic. Well, happy birthday, Tina. Have a fantastic birthday. Thank you. Thank you. And, um, Thank you, everybody, for joining tonight. I do hope that you've enjoyed it. It's been a fantastic webinar. Um, enjoy Tina's course. I know you're going to have an awesome time. And uh, just thank you, everybody, for coming. So uh, you guys all have an amazing uh, Wednesday. It's Wednesday morning where I am. So uh, I think it's Wednesday tomorrow where most of you are. But you have a <laughs> fantastic Tuesday night, Wednesday. And um, thank you very much, Tina. Thank you. All right. See you then, guys. Take care. Yeah, bye. Thank you for listening.